Hey everyone, Doug here. Today I'm going to be breaking down one of the most popular architectures that developers use when creating a project. In my opinion, this is one of the best patterns for abstracting your project, whether it's a mobile app, a web app, or anything else really. And that's the three-tiered architecture. The three-tier architecture is composed of three main tiers or layers. Usually you have the data layer, the application layer, and the interface layer. Although you could sneak in a couple of extra layers to do things like stream processing, load balancing, or even some caching if you wanted to. But I think that's better saved for when the project becomes more mature. Developers often have different technologies that they like to use for each layer, and they call that a stack. But before we get into some common stacks that developers use, let's take a look at the first layer, the data layer. This is your data store, where you keep and access all of the data needed for your application. Usually this layer refers to your database. The features available in your data source are super important. For example, I would choose MongoDB over any relational database for data that doesn't normalize well but especially for geolocation queries. Think of the Google Places API. A large portion of what this API does is available right out of the box for free with MongoDB. I'm a bit of a MongoDB fanboy, but it's not the right tool for every project. So you might consider something like MySQL, SQL, Couchbase, Redis, um, or really anything else. You get the point. The next layer is called the application layer. And this layer is where most of the magic happens in business applications, complex calculations, connections to other services, and so much more. This is what's usually referred to as the backend of your project. The backend usually runs on a server. I do have a development server, but I also use uh, AWS, DigitalOcean Droplets, or Azure. This part of the project rarely runs on the client side unless it's some installable application like a Windows app using C Sharp. Java, PHP, Python, Go, Dart, these are all different types of server-side programming languages that you'll likely see used in the application layer. Next is the interface layer. Whether it's a mobile app, a website, or even a terminal application, there's usually some sort of front end that the user interacts with, and that's this layer. Although some backend developers think the UI is just the garnish on the top of the project, well-designed interfaces are challenging to implement. Luckily, there are a ton of helpful frameworks and tools out there to help you develop and deploy a useful user interface. Many of the interfaces that I work on are designed for mobile, web, or both. So I'm most familiar with frameworks like Ionic, React Native, and Flutter. So why do we think of these different pieces as layers anyway? Because any action has to pass through the previous layer depending on the direction of the data flow. So you would never have a situation where your UI and your data layer are communicating directly, at least you shouldn't in this architectural pattern. So what you'd see happen is that your application layer, your middle layer, would access data from the database and then pass that data to the user interface. Imagine that'd be like trying to get an Uber, except you have to go on your phone and enter in a MySQL query to call an Uber for yourself. You wouldn't do that. Instead, you use the UI layer or the interface layer to interact with the back end, which then talks to the database and calls your Uber for you. So let's go over some pros and some cons of using this three-tiered architecture. In my opinion, some of the benefits of using a tiered architecture are that you get to decouple the different layers of your application, which helps you to scale the size of your application because you might have these pieces deployed on different servers, but it also allows for multiple developers to work on the project at one time, instead of the developers crawling all over each other to access all the same code in the same project, you can have developers working on individual layers of this code as long as they have a common interface. Secondly, you get to choose the proper technology for each layer. So like in the case of geospatial queries, we already talked about MongoDB does those really well. So maybe we use MongoDB instead of MySQL for the database layer. The three-tier architecture is well-documented and widely accepted by other developers. So there'll be a lot of resources for you to get answers to questions about how to connect these different layers. And finally, it can be really helpful if you're trying to work on your full stack skills, which basically just means that you're the kind of developer who can work at 
every layer. So you can work on the database, the application layer, or the UI. However, the three-tier architecture is not all coffee and cream. There's still some downfalls. The separation of all the pieces can lead to a lot of maintenance and updates in each layer as the different versions of the technologies change or when you need to do security patches. Speaking of security, when you do authentication and authorization, you need to make sure that a particular user is able to access the data at each layer. So the more different pieces you have talking to one another, the more complexity there is with the authentication process and the more handshakes that need to be done. And possibly the biggest challenge, if you are not a full stack developer, you might need an entire team with a variety of skill sets to be able to develop each of these different layers to make your application work properly. Not to mention, you might need an infrastructure team just to manage all the different servers that you have deployed. Now that we're on the same page about what a three-tier architecture is, here are some examples of common stacks that developers use when developing a project. The mean stack, M-E-A-N, is focused on building web apps and is made up of MongoDB at the data tier, Express.js for the application or server tier, and Angular to build the user interface. A similar stack is the MERN stack, M-E-R-N. This stack is used for developing mobile apps and it puts MongoDB at the data layer, Express.js at the application layer, but it uses React Native for the front end. As all of this information simmers, try to think about some applications that you already use and try to think about what kind of stacks they might be using under the hood or even try recreating some of your favorite apps using a three-tiered architecture. That's it for today's software architecture introduction. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next one.